Australian Open, which was his best result in a major event leading up to this particular term, which is his first final. So the two coaches, dual coaches of Jim Courier on the left, Brad Stein and Jose Agueras. And interestingly enough, Agueras has been the head coach for Michael Chang in 1989, who broke the American drought in Paris. No American man had won for 34 years. And then he shifted to Courier for his two titles. But I think Spain made a big mistake in letting Jose Higuera slip away. He's now living in the United States in Palm Springs. Has turned out to be a tremendous coach, very even-tempered, just the type of coach these players need. Jim Croyer, it doesn't need a minute. Well, it was interesting, you know, Jose Garris, who is twice the semifinalist here, never got along with the Spanish authorities. He came from a poor background. He was a ball boy, helped support his family. And he just never was considered of the right class in Spain. That's quite a while ago, and so he's much happier in America. Yes, an American wife. I think it's too bad for the players such as Bruguera, oh, yes. Carlos Costa, uh, other Spanish up-and-comers. He really could provide us some real leadership for them. The Musketeers' Cup, named for the four French greats who really built this stadium. Jacques Brugnon, Henri Lacoste, uh, René Lacoste, Henri Cochet, and Time Jean Borotra. Lacoste, the crocodile, the man who designed the famous sports shirts, We'll be watching on television. Borotra may be here. We'll scan the crowd. He's almost 94, still playing tennis. They won the Davis Cup six times for France in 1927, popularized the game. Look at this. Bjorn Borg won six French Open titles, including four consecutive ones from 78 to 81, only to never play again. Whose he fault is that? Yours. Uh, don't blame me. I for do. That. Yvonne Lendl and Mats Vlander won three times each. Jim Courier trying to match their record and become the first American ever to win three French Open titles. Incredible effort by Jim Courier if he can pull this off. Three consecutive French Open titles. The only American man to win two is sitting next door to us, Tony Traver, 1954-55, doing television back to Australia. I wonder if he really wants Jim to win the third straight. What do you think? Bill? I think so. He was really pleased when Chang broke the drought. Here we go. For the French title. Kansas Hill. Right away, the backside boogie of Jim Courier. How he runs around the backhand, backs away, and the inside out forehand. I, I think the importance that it's be much more important in the beginning of this match for Sergi Bouguera. He hasn't been here before. He's clearly uptight. How he handled Jim Courier's pace in the beginning of this match is very important. I think it's much more important to him than it is to Jim Courier to get off to a good start. Certainly needs to, I'm sorry, but he certainly needs to keep his unforced errors to a minimum. Well, he's got to be a little tight. First time around in a major. This is the sixth major final for Courier. Won two Australians. Lost the U.S. final in 1991. Has won here twice. you heard is that of Bruno Rebu, a Niçoise from that pleasant seaside city on the Mediterranean and one of the professional umpires. He's a good one, isn't he, John? He's one of the best ones around. And you've had a few run-ins with him. One of the few guys that I get along with, Bart. Let's keep him. <laughs> He's happy to see me now because I'm not on the court anymore. 40 luck. Opening game. Best of five. And he has a point. Quarante.
kick We look at Jim Courier serving. I think he was trying to duplicate that cry check forehand from the other day. A big return from Bouguera. Might loosen him up a little bit, get him back, get him into this match more quickly. I also think the heat will help get him into the match more quickly, too. He'll be loosening up in a hurry. done a good job coaching Sergi. Sergi's shown clear improvement on other, other services despite that graphic we saw earlier. I think most of those losses were a couple years back. He did reach the finals in Milan earlier this year. Right. That's his only non-play court final. Indoor. He possesses a tremendous forehand with with a lot of kick off that hands. very heavy shot as we see here he hit a great forehand here the first shot would make this second shot 99 out of 100 Two times but because it's a french open final that's probably why he missed it well that makes all the hackers feel better we can all hit that shot ace only one but i think another key to the match is Hands how out. many free points they get off each other's first serves Good for Sergi to get an ace this early in the match. Help his morale. Has improved his serve quite a bit in the last 12 months. given in the native tongue, but not English as well. But the French feel they've got a great language. Let's hear it. Only lost one set in this tournament, and that set he was up 4-1 against Pete Sampras. I believe it's out, yes. And Bruguera breathes a little easier. That was double breaker coming up. Good stretch Calm here down. by Baguera, was forced to hit a slice forehand. Jim comes in with his patented inside-out forehand. Didn't hit it quite deep enough, but still should have made this volley. Wide for 30 all. Jim Curry is doing exactly what he should be doing here. He's putting immediate pressure on Bruguera. He senses that he's uptight. Attacks once again. Here's a fine touch volley. Break point. serve only five times in this tournament. That saves one. But as you just said, he's only lost his serve it. five times in the entire tournament, which is incredible, even on clay. Here's that patented inside-out foreign he hits with a lot more topspin than Jim, equally as effective. It is Deuce. Ruggera trying to get to the safety of one all. Shake his nerves.
was a well-played point by both players until this particular shot. Too short, not good enough drop shot there. He paid the price for it. We see Bruguera's backhand at the heavy topspin. Moves extremely well. Good preparation. A chance to get even in this match. Advantage for the Spaniard. Ace, second of the game. One game all. And a nice recovery by Sergi Bruguera. And we, we look here, uh, Jim has played quite a bit longer in his matches. Average time, 238. Has lost his serve quite a bit more. As we said in the open, he struggled more than Bruguera. Bruguera has clearly played the best of any player in this event. The question is, can he keep it up today against the number one player in the world? I somehow don't think he's going to lower his average against Courier. Might win, but it'll take longer than that. Jim Courier kicking his second serve in. Bouguera hitting a little bit short. Watch this preparation here on the backhand. Beautiful stroke. Slid right into that. Winning backhand down the line. Love 15. Sergi looks like he's getting himself into the match. That was a big game for him to win, bud. How often do you see him at two aces in one game? I haven't in this tournament. As we noticed from that point, Sergi sliced that forehand return, and the reason for that is he doesn't have time to change his grip. Watch as we see here, Jim hits a pretty big first serve, but he's forced to slice that ball. He told me before the match that he needs to do that in order to, he can't get, doesn't have time to hit that full swinging topspin shot, so he's chosen just to block the ball back. 15 all. the heavy topspin bothered Jim a little there. Heavy Can't topspin count. bothers a lot of players. Yeah. Already in this match, but you see as Bruguera toweling off in the back, I believe the conditions are going to play a factor. Hot, humid. The real question is, if, is as how much has been taken out of Jim Courier leading into this final? Well, he's had two days rest. Sergio has certainly had the easier time coming into this match. And great points. So Sergi Bruguera, who shucked off a break point in the previous game, now has a couple for himself. It's amazing how important it is to get that first service game under your belt. He looks like a different player already. Papa Bruguera, Luis Bruguera, Barcelona. <laughs> service winner. But another great point awaiting. to deuce. Buddy claimed he learned that shot from me watching me return, sir. He probably, those last two returns, I think, he learned from me. Certainly in the last few years. Those two misses. I thought you meant the soft. Yeah, I wish I had.
part, Sergey Bouguer hit two monstrous forehands in this point. Avantage Good angle Bouguer. here on the backhand. Set up this forehand here. Look at this. That was all risk. Came up, took his time, hit this line and skidded a little bit, but he still had enough cool to put that away. Break point three. Good backhand here, cross court. This is a huge form right there. Set himself up for the winning shot. Break point number three. You don't see forehands bigger than that, but anywhere. Big Eddie King. Second deuce. That's the problem with changing grips on your strokes, so a little bit of indecision there, whether to sort of push the ball back or try to run around and hit that big swinging shot. And he chose to do that and didn't even get the ball back in play. With the newer equipment, did you ever change your grip later in your career to hit some Western? I never did change my grip. I always taught by my old coach, Tony Powell, versus that one continental Continental. type grip. And you could hit topspin with it? Not like these guys. No, no, I understand. Boom! And another break point. Avantage will be Fourth of the game. Surprisingly loose stroke there from Jim, but I think he's feeling those, the pressure of that forehand, the heavy kick on the topspin. The ball is really kicking up. The conditions are fairly quick, which you'd think would favor Courier. But the ball seems to be really kicking up off that court of Bruguera's ground strokes. Hey, get each Third deuce. And this is starting to look like Bruguera becoming Bruguera. Longer rallies, deeper shots, heavier spin. <laughs> I think the longer rallies will favor Bruguera, clearly. Jim likes to get control of the point early, hit two or three strokes, and then go for that big winning forehand. <laughs> Serving volley doesn't work. But he looks a little bit anxious here. You don't see Jim Courier serving volley very often on clay. Bruguera just blocking the ball back. And a fifth break point. Jim was just not in position for that volley. He seems just a tad confused. I think he's surprised at how the pace of Bruguera's shots. This isn't the Bruguera of recent Rome. into the shelter of a fourth deuce. It's just too good here by Jim Courier. Sets himself up here with this forehand. Bouguer was not expecting that down the line approach. Outright winner. It's not easy to hit outright winners against Sergio Bouguer on clay. He's very, very quick. Six feet two and moves like a basketball player. <laughs> Jim thought he had a service winner. Bruno Rebu asked Pierre Charton to check it. Yeah, it was good. Now, what's the call? I think Bruguera has the right to a let because he could say, I heard the call of fault. Well, he did have a play on it, and uh, it should be a let. I think Bruno's making the right decision here. He says it's very close. And I believe Bruno's right. Well, it's going to be very tough to tell from this angle. From the booth, it looked like it caught the back of the line, but Bruguera did have a play, so Bruno made the right call. And he says he could have heard the service linesman cry fault. Oh. And Jim puts himself in the rough again. Down. A sixth break point. Already 
already 0 for 5 in breakpoint chance. It's very big to, for Bouguer to win this first set. He's only won, lost one set the entire tournament, but he's never taken a set off Jim Courier. So psychologically, it would be very important for him to get ahead of Jim Courier. And he's never really been behind at all the whole tournament, so... spent the night at the movies, but we never get tired of this show. Uh, this is his first time in a Grand Slam final. It looked as if he was tentative in the first couple games, obviously nervous. He's come out of that and now up a break, and it looks to me like Jim Curry is a little bit confused about how to attack Sergei Bagheera this time. I think he's surprised at the pace of his strokes. Certainly served better, hitting two aces that first game. We'll see how Jim Curry handles it now. Only a 50-50 uh, record coming into this event. 13 and 13 coming into the French Open. So very mixed results coming into here. Oh. He is clearly a different player than he was even a year ago. When I believe he lost Yvonne Lendl in the first round. I think another factor to help him is he came in here fresher than he had in any other at any other year. He hasn't played so much this spring. He's been worn down. <laughs> in previous years. <laughs> that is a monster forehand. I think what you see here, Bud, is how tough it is to read this stroke. It's a forehand down the line. Courier on the run comes right back behind him. A very smart play, especially on clay. I think if we see at this point, you can't see it on this graphic, but Jim Courier was absolutely flat-footed, trying to guess which way Bruguer was going, and he is really in a groove right now. Look at there. You see Jim hesitate, not know which way to turn. He couldn't pick up where he was hitting it. 40 love, but that is why. 40-15. 40 I don't think I've ever seen Jim Courier on the run so much. But by far and away, the toughest player on the tour mentally. So believe me, his wheels are churning right now, figuring out ways to get back into this. I'm sure he's saying, hey, we got a long way to go here. Celette, Brad Stein, Jose Garris, Team Courier. The usual looks, concern looks. Another big oh, serve yeah, for Bouguera. Good serve today. Good. As Bouguera steps out to the 40-15. But that's 3-1. Yeah, I was right the first time. One break separates them. That of Courier in the third game. Surprisingly, looks like he's hitting the ball as hard as Courier. And I think that's very unexpected. A lot of pace on those strokes and a lot of spin. Kansas is
Well, but not only does he have power off his ground strokes, he Cancel. has some excellent touch. It's a fairly short return here. Jim comes in and look at that touch backhand. Nice slice. 15 and he, all. And he knows as well as anyone else that Jim Courier, if he has any sort of weak point whatsoever, is his volley. And there he looked a little bit out of sync. Well, nobody looks very good on a volley like that, or a half volley. Very smart play by Bruguera. You and Ken Rosewell, maybe. and it's correct for Courier. Tompkins. Well, he, Sergio Baguera lost this point, but we saw how quick he was around the back of the court. This is a tremendous get right here. Look at him slide and hit it at the same time. Sets himself up nicely for this and almost hit a winner on that backhand down the line. Well, when you see him slide like that, you know it's a real homebred dirt kicker. This is the Dirt Kicker's Ball, the French Open, the one major on clay. Well, Bud, as he said in his interviews coming into this event, yeah, he, he never played on anything else but clay. They didn't have any hard courts in Spain when he grew up. Unlike America, for example, say a Pete Sampras who grew up in California, there's no clay courts there. So to Pete to come along as well as he's done. He should feel good about himself. He lost to a tremendous clay court, play, clay court player here. As we see the winners, Bruguera's already got twice as many as Jim, and that's very unexpected. It's 40-15, Bruguera up a service break, 3-1. So, Sergio Bruguera will try to improve his lead when we return. Get laser quality faxes with a Meta Plain Paper Fax Machine. Once before. Well, but as we've seen for these uh, graphics here, tremendous record by both players on clay courts. Sergi's only got a 40 and 40 time lifetime record on other surfaces, so clearly, by far and away, his best surface, where Jim Curry is equally strong on other surfaces. <laughs> On the line. Oh. Sergio Bruguera, interestingly, John, has won more tournaments on clay than Courier, 7-4. That's, that's very surprising. You know, I think Jim Courier picked the right ones to win, though. <laughs> yeah. Two Italian Open and two French Open titles. turned around Sergio Bruguera's year and possibly career was losing two heartbreaking matches in Davis Cup earlier this year to Holland. Overwhelming favorite against Paul Harhouse and Mark Coverman's losing two five-set matches since then has turned things around beautifully winning at Monte Carlo finals at Barcelona losing to Courier in Rome winning all his matches in Nations Cup and here he is in the finals of the French Open. Because after we look at this point, Tompkins. well, we just saw another beautiful inside out forehand. Jim Curry just getting to it, but this overhead was too short. I think the important thing is that you usually learn more from your losses and mistakes than you do from winning consistently. And I think in this particular case, it really opened his eyes, and he looks a far different player than he did even a couple months ago. touch there by Sergi Bouguera. Well, we haven't seen him do that in this tournament either. This is the other part of his game, but that he's improved upon quite a bit. It's a good approach shot. Not such a good volley here. Good guess here, but this is a tremendous drop volley. Got wow. 40-15. Yeah, he strings his rackets at about 40 pounds, which is very unusual for players today. And his grip is about four and a quarter. Allow him to whip around on the strokes. <laughs> The smallest grip, I'm sure, by far on the tour. 